because the historical society of Delaware had the right to put in a proposal to operate it doesn't mean that they are right. A center for presenting and preserving the culture and heritage of African Americans was first proposed in 1996 by current state representative Stephanie T. Bolden, who was a member of the Wilmington City Council at the time, and Baker, who was then serving as city council president. In the words of the Beatles, I'm going to say to BB, come back! <laughs> Joyce Martin, come back! Gene Nutter, come back! Lynn Howard, come back! Come back, all of you, where you belong! On June 2nd, 2016, when 11 council members approved the resolution sponsored by Councilman Darius Brown. Good morning, Eastside. Uh, it is good to be on the east side. Uh, I like to call it the place where opportunity lives uh, because this is the birthplace of the city of Wilmington. But our preachers and our teachers have a responsibility to our children. This is a sacred moment here because you know what? This is maybe one of the first times we have literally come together and said no more. This is the first time that we're talking to power and saying to power whether they're black, white, pink, over that or blue, that you have to honor us. You have to care about us. You cannot, no people in the world give their history to another people. And that does not mean it's racist. It means that you respect all right. And we have to do it because we've never really had the full meaning of our own history. We started in 1986 when the state of Delaware was celebrating the bicentennial, the second bicentennial of the signing of the Constitution. You all know that Delaware was the first to ratify the Constitution. And back in 1986, plans were being made to celebrate that. But the plans did not include African-Americans. I met with the director and she said, no, it, it, no, no, nothing's going on. So to make a long story short, we formed a statewide organization that became the Afro-American Historical Society. And we set out a plan, we formed a plan of activities that, and projects that we thought would be appropriate for preserving our history and, and informing the public of this precious history. And at the top of the list was the most difficult and that was that we wanted to establish an African-American museum or heritage center. That was 1986. Fast forward 10 years in 1996, when MBNA was purchasing properties in Wilmington to uh, build their office complex, move it from Newark to Wilmington. And one of the sites they purchased was the Mother Church at 12th and French Streets. A letter was sent to the president of MBNA, Charles Cawley, asking this simple question, does corporate expansion always have to threaten black historic sites? He responded by setting up a meeting with a Mr. Lance Weaver. And from that meeting, the idea of an African-American Heritage Center was presented to MBNA. They did not know where the LI Kid building was located, but I knew because I used to work here as a janitor when I was at college. A couple of weeks after that meeting, Mayor Sills called me and said, Harmon, MBNA is going to donate the LI Kid building to become an African-American Heritage Center. Now, I say to you, and there's been questions about whether this building should be used for other purposes, and no doubt there are any number of good projects that this building could be used for. But it seems to me that there should be some respect given to the donors who specify what they wanted it used for. So I am so happy to be here 
as I was happy in 1996 when we met here to announce the acquisition of the building and the plans then, 20 years ago, to establish an African American Heritage Center. that he is, created a board of directors with various background to begin the process of making our objective come to fruition. My name is uh, Jim Sills. Many years ago, 60 or 70 years ago, uh, universities and colleges were making staff available to go out into the farming areas and to help farmers to be more productive, uh, to, be, um, to get better yields from their crops, and to provide technical assistance to farmers in general. Uh, as a result of the riots uh, in the um, uh, early 60s, um, there was a demand for universities to do something similar in the cities uh, that they had done in the farming areas. So, our job was to organize a, an urban agent program and to have professional staff and faculty persons to work with community groups to address problems at the neighborhood and uh, uh, community level, to engage in community organization activities, to engage in community development activities, uh, to a large extent directed towards getting the neighborhoods and neighborhood groups to be more self-reliant, take more initiative for uh, addressing their own problems, even while at the same time advocating for our greater share of resources from uh, bodies like the Delaware General Assembly, the Newcastle County Council, and the federal government. Yeah, there, is a, there is an organization um, called the African American Heritage Center. It's not just facts, it's a matter of interpretation. Uh, and uh, we feel that the African American perspective is going to be left out if the historical society tells the story. There's, uh, it's almost as if they are trying to re rewrite history, to cleanse it, to whitewash it, if you will. We believe that the entire story needs to be told, not just one side of the story, and we're just fearful that if they are, are awarded this contract, only one side of the story will be told. People living in the city um, are somewhat handicapped because as the city loses its population and as more people leave the city to move to suburban areas, as our population has dwindled a lot over the last 20 years, our elected representatives in the Delaware General Assembly, in the House and in the Senate, uh, has been diminished. Hearts and prayers are with us. A lot has been said about this issue. It's not new. The argument is not new. The reason and logic is real, godly, and just. And I think as you will probably join me that it is ironic, ironic, that on the Wednesday going into Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday, 
that we celebrate nationally that our mayor, an African-American mayor, Jim Baker, would make such an insulting decision for the black community rather than to do the right thing. We can go on and on and on uh, about talking about who controls what. To me, we should be not segregated from the history of America. We should be integrated as we kept fighting for in the 60s and the 70s. And now all of a sudden we get to this point and everybody says we should segregate. <clears throat> for what reason? If Mayor Baker were a Caucasian mayor and had come down on our community over the last 11 and a half years, yes, sir. like he has, we'd have been running out of town. and bust, yeah. he's insulted audiences, All right. press conferences down the waterfront just a week or so ago. Threaten to fight and I'll kick your A for people who disagree with him. It's most unfortunate, most unfortunate that he occupies the ninth floor and has done it for three turns. I'm here at Peter Spencer and I look across the street at 820 Friend Street. That used to be our African American church, the Easian church. It's gone. Yes, gone. It I look directly across the street at Louis L. Redding City County Building that was African American, the National Theater, and later changed to the Hopkins Theater. Black owned. Everything on the east side of Wilmington was black owned. Everything on the east side of Wilmington was black owned. We have got to start fighting for what we desire to have. Folks just come in, take whatever they want to take, take whatever they want to make, and we stand by it. Harmon Carey of the Afro-American Historical Society says Delaware's African-American Heritage Center should be established here at the Allied Kid Building on Clifford Brown Walk in Wilmington. He doesn't think the Delaware Historical Society should run the Heritage Center. Please the folks uptown and take the Delaware Historical Society. Some of us happen to agree with that position. Please don't take the position that we're going to run the But Wilmington Mayor James Baker disagrees and has given the Delaware Historical Society one million dollars to establish the center on Market Street. When it comes to overseeing uh, funds of this magnitude to ensure that the, the organization that's entrusted with the responsibility has all that it takes to do it successfully. So I'm asking you to have public hearings so that you, first of all, can know which organizations plan to do what. That means the Historical Society of Delaware and our group should appear before you and before the public. And the, you should have the right to question. The public should have the right to question. This should not be done on the basis of a selection committee comprised only of the mayor's staff to make a decision only by the mayor. I think we all ought to be cautioned against attacking each other, engaging in name calling. Those of us who take that position and the rest of us need to sit down and talk. We need to make sure that we realize that we all need each other and that we need to not see ourselves as the enemy. That's right. We all need each other. So we have fewer people in bodies, legislative bodies, that have policy making control. We have far too fewer people who represent the city of Wilmington. And that adversely affects our ability to engage in urban revitalization. You know, uh, it's quite simple. We have rights. We have a responsibility to maintain our sacred heritage. That's the point we've got to understand. You know, if you want children 
to behave a certain way. They've got to feel that they are important, that they are sacred, yes, and that they have a right to exist, and they are God-like. Yes. And they cannot feel that way. When they go to public schools, they hear nothing about themselves. When they turn on television and it's all of negative fighting and killing and saying to power whether they're black, white, pink, polka dot, or blue, that you have to honor us. You have to care about us. You cannot, no people in the world give their history to another people. And that does not mean it's racist. It means that you respect all right. 2011, the African American Heritage Center uh, organization was born uh, with Mayor Jim Seals serving as its president. It has a board. It's a private, nonprofit group. Um, I'm the president of the board. We had as our primary objective of establishing an African American Heritage Center on the east side, which was des designated by Wilmington City Council as an African American Heritage Zone in 2000. The executive director is um, Harmon Carey. The Italians can't tell we Irish how to make Irish stew. <laughs> All right. Now, Mayor Sills and others have spoken to the composition of the Delaware Historical Society. One black board member, only three in 147 years. And I met with the director and questioned him about this. And he told me how difficult it is to find qualified black people to serve on the board. And they have the skill. Haven't we heard that tired excuse? And they have the skill. We're right sick here. and tired of that. And when I ask him about the staff in administrative or professional positions, he said, we have one. I said, in what capacity? He said, in a support role. I said, supporting what? He said, supporting facilities. They have the facilities. Doesn't that sound like a maintenance man? No, Jim, not a maintenance manager, but a maintenance worker. Okay. The basic argument was the historical society had not uh, paid very much attention to the African American community. In uh, actual fact, they have a tremendous collection on African Americans in Delaware. And they have the skill, they have the facilities, and why not? Would the Israelis want the Palestinians to operate their heritage center? Would the Jews want the Germans to operate a Holocaust center? The African American Heritage Center operated by blacks, developed and created by the black community for all of the good people to get a truthful history of the black American experience here in Wilmington. There's no way that we as black people would stand for the National Association of White People to operate a slavery museum. We cannot allow the his Delaware Historical Society to kidnap our history and try to claim legitimacy by adding a few African-American leaders to an advisory group, a group of people that their own director said aren't qualified to serve on the board of directors. It is an affront to the entire black community. It should be an affront to those members who have aligned themselves with the Historical Society of Delaware. We had as our primary objective establishing an African-American Heritage Center on the east side, which was des designated by Wilmington City Council as an African-American Heritage Zone in 2000. We had previously met or made presentations to the prior administration. They could have raised their money. They could have set up their own institution. From 2000 to 2011, no advancement was made to make this center a reality. I mean, what's stopping? The city doesn't stop people from forming their own organizations, getting a building, putting in whatever facility. That was available. 
And to put it at town hall is the ultimate insult. Town hall with jail cells in the basement where runaway slaves were imprisoned, brutalized, sentenced, and sent back into slavery. Town hall should be the African American Heritage Center, Newton, Martin, and Canby in their article on Friday called this a magnificent place. Wow. It's not a magnificent place. We have to oppose this. This is an organization that sterilizes, what is that, white washes history. They don't have the legitimacy, they don't have the heart, they don't have the commitment, they don't even have the knowledge. They don't know who our neighborhood heroes and heroines are and were. If they have this, just hundreds of people who have toiled in the trenches to make conditions better for all of us are going to be forgotten. Because what do they look to in terms of our history? It's elites. Look at their board of, uh, of their committee. Elites, no grassroots people. Hardly any people from Wilmington. How are you? We have to stand together. I know that we can overcome this. So I'm going to say, just because the mayor had the right to make this decision, and just because the Historical Society of Delaware had the right to put in a proposal to operate it, doesn't mean that they are right. In the words of the Beatles, I'm going to say to BB, come back. <laughs> Joyce Martin, come back. Gene Nutter, come back. Lynn Howard, come back. Come back, all of you, where you belong. Amen. And we're going to have the door open for you. And when you come in the door, our arms are going to be open. Right. We're going to embrace That's you. Right. We're going to love you. That's right. Just like we always did. Uh, we have a building at uh, Clifford Brown Way, at the corner of Clifford Brown Way, and um, uh, 11th Street that was given to the city uh, by MBNA, the MBNA Corporation. MBNA donated uh, $296,000, I believe, or maybe it was $250,000 uh, to the city specifically to purchase the building. And the city did purchase the building. You go back and tell your friends that it's cold out here this morning. Yes. But it's hot as hell on that night floor tonight. Yes. It's going to be hot as hell over in that building tomorrow. And I know they're watching the news okay. and they watch Channel 22 and I hope he was out there. And I said, the actions of this man is either that he's mentally challenged, insane, or acting like he's on crack. And I hold to that. They could have raised their money. They could have set up their own institution. I mean, what's stopping? The city doesn't stop people from forming their own organizations, getting a building, putting in whatever. That was available. MBNA did not contribute any money for programmatic activities. The money was just spent to purchase the building. If we all work together, we can make this a grand experience. It should be. Uh, those who are the naysayers have been saying that for 15, 17 years. It was given to the city to be used as a heritage center or a, an African American museum. And the building has been, was donated to the city uh, in the late 1990s, I think it was 1998. And um, we haven't made much progress in uh, refurbishing the building, uh, renovating it, and turning it into a heritage center or an African-American museum. Um, resources have been scarce, and we've had difficulty getting groups in the community to present 
an organized, united front. It's, it becomes an issue because you didn't win. But that's like if you lose the basketball game, the football game, the baseball game. You said it, uh, the referees or the um umpires were the cause of your loss. You lost. Get on with it. The African American Heritage Center is a work in progress. This fight is really key because of the fact that it defines our future as a community, as a people, as a culture. It defines what we're going to be perceived as in years to come. And what, you know, from our ancestors to us, to our future generations. So we have to dig in and, 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 and fight this battle. Uh, Dr. King put it like this. He, he said that cowardice would ask, is it safe? He said expediency would ask, is this political? He said vanity would ask, is this popular? But conscience would ask you the right. Well, my name is Linwood Jackson. I am currently serving as president of the NAACP Delaware State Conference of Branches. I uh, also have the privilege of serving uh, on the board of the African American Historical Society. There been questions about whether this building should be used for other purposes. And no doubt there are any number of good projects that this building could be used for. But it seems to me that there should be some respect given to the donors who specify what they wanted it used for. We are here to witness the L.I. Kid building contract signing ceremony, where today this building will become an institute for the African American heritage. On behalf of the NAACP Delaware State Conference, I commend you and I thank you for having the vision and the dream to see this, this building turn into a half African American historic uh, uh, heritage center. Thank you so very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. So I am so happy to be here, as I was happy in 1996 when we met here to announce the acquisition of the building and the plans then, 20 years ago, to establish an African American heritage center. Good morning to all of our elected officials and ladies and gentlemen. We believe that African American history, especially in Wilmington and particularly the East Side, must be captured and preserved not only for this present time, but as well as for future generations yet to come. On June 2, 2016, when 11 council members approved the resolution sponsored by Councilman Darius Brown. Good morning, Eastside. Uh, it is good to be on the east side. Uh, I like to call it the place where opportunity lives uh, because this is the birthplace of the city of Wilmington. And it is also the birthplace of African-American life and African-American identity uh, in the city of Wilmington. I want to thank my council colleagues who are here with me and ask them if they would join me up here. Uh, Councilman Michael Brown, Councilman uh, Justin Wright, and Council President Theo Gregory. To award the African American Heritage Center organization the Allied Kid Building. Today, August 4th, 2016, Mayor Dennis P. Williams and Mayor Jane Seals will validate this significant and historic decision by signing the contractual agreement that will give the African American Heritage Center owner of the Allied Kid Building. Thank you.
ever transferred the property to the group that's been working on this. that your administration transferred ownership of five properties to the African American Heritage Center of Delaware. Why did you decide to do this? And why transfer these properties to the AHI specifically? The property has a long history. It was purchased by MBNA, if I recall properly. Gosh, well, MBNA has been active for 15 plus years. It was in the 90s, as far as I remember, that MBNA purchased it. And they purchased it because then Mayor Sills wanted to support the use of a of this heritage center over there. I think there was a there was a long-standing coalition of folks from the east side of the city that wanted some African American cultural center located on the east side. And this was this was the venue that they had worked on for years. But no mayor had ever transferred the property to the, the group that's been working on this. You know, it's not going to be an easy lift for them. The building itself needs a lot of improvement, but we really don't we don't see a good alternative for the site right now in the near future anyway. And we know the folks, we know they've been working hard on it for years, and we just decided there's no good reason in the world why we shouldn't give them the benefit of the doubt the way we give a lot of people on that side of town the benefit of the doubt because we want to see, we want to see the east side and other neighborhoods that have had tough histories and we want to see them thrive. So we're going to do everything we can to support them. So how exactly does this kind of property transfer work? Is it relatively simple and straightforward? It's not very difficult. We don't have to go through a big, long process as made in some areas. I think it's more difficult for someone to get a building permit if they've got to alter the building because it's in a historic district, so it's got to go through a variety of different approval processes. And turning around and selling the property is fairly straightforward for us. It's just a matter of disposing the property in accordance with the rules and rights of the city. So how long has this transfer been in the works? From us, it's certainly been two or three years that we've been working through it. And, you know, I mean, it's hard to imagine that it takes that long, but I think there's some fundamental disagreements about how the property could be supervised, managed, uh, meaning that we wanted to control what that use was. We wanted to make sure that the organization that we dealt with is the same organization that uh, will be managing and controlling the property into the future. We didn't want to see the property given to them and then turned around and sold to somebody else for whatever reason. And for some reason that only people in government can explain, it just took us too long to, to get where we, we are. I don't think we lost any time. The pandemic was so bad, nobody could do anything during the pandemic. So I don't think that we lost a lot of time. But we're happy we're here. And if the African American Heritage Center folks are successful, we're going to have a real beacon on this, on this side of town. And I think it will be a very worthwhile effort for all of us to see this property reach its potential. It could be something really beautiful, and so we're looking forward to cooperating with them in every way imaginable, and wish them well and hope they have success. The Heritage Center is a relatively newly established nonprofit uh, entity here in Wilmington. Uh, the purpose of, the, of this nonprofit is to provide educational and cultural experiences uh, for the black community and to uh, play a role in teaching and educating the black community about the black experience as we've had it here in Delaware. According to Mayor Prozicki, property transfers like this can be fairly common, but in this case, what's the significance, and specifically the historical significance, of these five properties that were transferred over to your organization? Well, we, the, the African American Heritage Center, sees itself as playing a major role in the overall social and economic development of the East Side. And that means also playing a role in the physical development of the East Side, playing a role in helping to revitalize some of the buildings that 
uh, here, many of them 100, 130 years old. Three properties, vacant properties that have been given to us. Uh, we see our purpose as establishing an African-American heritage center on the east side and having that center to play a role in helping community groups to know more about it, the history of the east side and how black folks have played a role in the overall development of the east side. Looking at the actual properties, is there any plan to kind of build off of the historical significance of the properties themselves, like the Newcastle Leather Company and the Allied Kid Company? And I guess overall, what do you plan on putting in the actual buildings and working through there? As you probably know, um, leather tanning was a, was a major industry in Delaware. And at one time, um, the leather tanning business accounted, uh, accounted for about 20% of the jobs in this community. So do we at some point plan to, to link this historical significance of the L.I. Kid building or, or let people, or educate people about the significance of the L.I. Kid building to, to the uh, economic development of the community? Absolutely. Looking ahead at your plans for using these buildings and for expanding your organization, what can people expect to see come up on the east side? and? How do you plan on doing the outreach for this to get the community involved? We have a lot of programs which now celebrate black history and give recognition to the accomplishments of black people. We don't have enough programs in our community that teach black history, that educate people about black history. I think young people uh, don't get enough attention uh, as far as understanding history and culturally uh, what it is that black folks have done to advance uh, the development in our community. Roles we played economically, what roles we played educationally, what roles we have played politically in advancing uh, our east side and our state of Delaware. I can't really add new stuff to there still what you said. I will, I will say this, we spent uh, a good portion of last year, the last calendar year, developing our strategic plan. And with that strategic plan, and, and sometimes that kind of work can be a little bit tedious and it's not real glamorous, but it's, it's essential in order for, we think it's essential in order for us to be able to provide um, effective program. I look at the kids that are out there today, and I look at my own experience, and, and I would imagine that if you think back a little bit yourself, there were people either your family structure, or your father, or other folks in your life that had an influence on how you ultimately uh, navigated uh, through your through your developmental years and into you know your high school and college and professional years. You have folks that kind of uh, that kind of uh, influence that and maybe formal mentors or informal mentors that had an impact on, on your life. Well all kids need that. And a lot of these kids out here today don't have that. And that's, that's part of the role that, that we want to play for these kids. objective there is to use that building at, uh, at the corner of Cliff and Brown Way and 11th Street to um, present programs of a cultural, historical, and educational nature uh, relative to the black experience and relative to uh, the experiences that African Americans have, have had not only in Wilmington but throughout the, uh, the United States and to make sure our young people have a better understanding of the role that we have played in making this country uh, the economic giant that it is, and, and also in making sure that um, we get our fair share of resources from governmental and ungovernmental sources.